The map of RuneScape is divided into chunks. As a one chunk man, I'll have to complete all tasks in a chunk before moving on to the next. And I'll be starting right here in Yanil. Welcome back to Yanil, my chunky home. I'm trying to complete just about everything in this area before rolling a new chunk. Here are the chunk goals. Last episode we made some great progress, getting a bunch of gear upgrades, including the oak shield, which I was able to chop and fletch using a bronze axe that I made from a bar that came from these dwarves. After stockpiling runes, I killed 1000 dwarves with the most advanced dwarf luring techniques ever invented, as they mostly wander outside my chunk. Since one of my goals is 50 range to wield the hunter's crossbow, I calculated that I'm gonna have to kill 4,000 dwarves for the bars and ores needed to train up to that level using knives. But right now, I'm gonna focus on a different skill. My thieving level is 51 and it needs to be 65 so that I can pickpocket a watchman. Not too bad, right? The only issue is that I can only train by pickpocketing men, 8 XP at a time. The soldiers and tower guards don't have a pickpocket option. Even from the level that I'm at now, that's still over 40,000 pickpockets to go. I'm estimating this grind will take around 40 or 50 hours in total, which is actually kind of ideal because it helps me work toward one of my other goals, the agility lamping goal. Like I said at the end of last episode, when I hit level 2, I'm actually about halfway through my lamping goals, so hopefully I can get blessed with some more XP randoms while becoming Yanil's most renowned burglar. There's the first level of the episode, 52 thieving. 53 thieving. And as you can see from my inventory, I switched from drinking beers to eating all the apple pies I made a few episodes ago. If I'm gonna pickpocket this man 40,000 times, I'm gonna need to save my sanity wherever I can. Ugh, these apple pies are making me feel all... pixelated. I wish I had something healthy to eat instead. Hold on there, Chunky Nil. You can have something healthy. I can? Yep. Because we just got our first ever video sponsor, Factor! Can I tell you about them? Please, anything but more apple pies. Great, this won't take long. Factor delivers ready-made meals right to your door. That means you don't even have to leave your chunk to get fresh, nutritious meals designed by dietitians. Perfect for area-restricted gamers such as myself. No meal prep, no mess, all convenience. You know how food heals you in games? It does that in real life too. Factor helps you avoid the debuffs of fast food by stocking you up on nutritious options at home. And Factor's healthy meals fit whatever kind of IRL account build you're doing, whether it's keto, calorie smart, vegan, vegetarian, or protein plus. And if you're watching this video, you're probably like me. You'd like to set goals and achieve them. Factor helps you hit your fitness goals starting with what you eat. Good, nutritious ingredients. Personally, I have to take on some long grinds on this account, and finding the time to get up and make a real meal is almost impossible. Normally I'll get up and grab some junk food or, you know, 28 apple pies, but the convenience of having Factor's ready-made meals means I can get back to the grind immediately with a smoothie or take just two minutes to heat up a chef-quality meal. And when I'm done, there's no dishes and no mess. Don't be like Chunky Nil who persists on beer and apple pies. Be better. Try Factor. And seriously, if you've been enjoying my content and want a way to support the channel, use my link in the description or visit go.factor75.com and use the code on the screen for 50% off your first box. You'll be supporting me directly and you get healthy meals at a discount. It's a win-win and a great way to help out your favorite content creators. Now, back to the grind. Damn, I thought I was gonna miss that maze, holy shit. Well, that's good, there's another maze for us. And I lost the footage for this part, but here's 20 farming. That's almost halfway to 28, which is our chunk farming goal. And that's a really clean number, 150,000 thieving XP. That's almost exactly one third of the way to the goal. It's a lot of thieving left to go though. Also, just a quick reminder as to why I have this man cornered behind the piano. I showed off in a past episode that these men will never naturally walk along these tiles, which means that if I attack one and lure him back here, he'll never leave this little area. This corner by the piano just so happens to be the perfect spot as he'll never move and I can just spam click to my heart's content. And just a couple hundred XP later we get 54 thieving. Santa is here to support your grind. What would you like for April Christmas? Approximately 30,000 clicks of this man what being do down now laughing. Trying to will that RN. 
Keep willing. I think it's working. I asked and you guys delivered. I had a bunch of friends show up and help me out with luring some dwarves. This is just the beginning of this. Having these lures is going to help me get to 4,000 dwarves much faster. Also, thanks for whatever this is. <laughs> Bada boom, 50 defense. And that is base 50s in the combats. And we have 50 hit points, wow. All right, we're ending this first session off with over 1400 dwarves, which is a major dent in the grind. So I was just recently informed that the tool leprechaun will actually note my weeds. I had been carrying these around with me when I was too lazy to go to a bank, but he will apparently note them for you. I thought he only did that for crops. But no, he'll note your weeds. There's 55 thieving. And there is 56 thieving. Because one of my main goals right now is getting XP randoms, I've decided to just start up with some wood cutting and fletching in the background when I need to AFK and do some editing. I may uh, show some wood cutting levels along the way. We're also doing some fletching along the way just to uh, make it worth my while. There's level 40 wood cutting. There's 21 farming. And there we go, a clean 200k thieving XP. That's looking amazing. Hmm. Very suspicious uh, activity. 57 thieving. Yeah, grubby chest time, guys. Woo! Nice. I almost missed this genie. I was looking away, getting my Discord server set up. There's the lamp for some more agility XP. 20. Wow, it goes so much faster now. That's amazing. By the way, the Discord server is now fully set up, and if you aren't in it, you should join it. The Discord link is in the description of this video. If you join, you can see when I go live on Twitch, which is something I've been doing more often lately, so definitely come hang out in the Discord. No way. Back-to-back -back genie. Oh, man. That is so good. Let's go. Put that onto agility. And look at that. We're one book away from level three agility already. That is amazing. Oh my god, another genie? I haven't even gotten a thieving level yet. This is insane. So because we're one XP book away from level three agility, I think I'm going to hang on to this lamp until I get a book. That way I get the most XP out of every lamp. There's 59 thieving. Very nice. Dude, another genie? What is going on? I guess I'm just gonna have to save this lamp too. This last weed rake here will get us to 22 farming. Very nice. Definitely been spending a lot of time AFKing here at the tree patch and raking weeds in the meantime. What is this luck? That's just back to back just now. What is happening? Three lamps my inventory? This is insane. For once, this man is finally not inviting me to do a maze, which is very sad, but that's okay. And there is a big one. 60 thieving has been achieved. That is super good. We are just over the halfway mark here. To mark this milestone, I've got a fun Yanil fact for you all. Standing here thieving this man for so long, I've really had time to look at my surroundings, which brought my attention to something I've been curious about ever since I arrived here in Yanil. This hole. It's pretty mysterious. Examining it just confirms that yes, it is in fact a hole. I've tried dropping things down it, but that doesn't seem to work, so I did some investigation. It was hard trying to find information on such an ambiguous piece of scenery, and I had just about given up until one day I was looking into the ogre city of Gutanoth, thinking about future chunk rolls. You know these weird scavid caves? If you actually bring a light source in a scavid map, you may discover that one of these scavid caves has a one-way exit to Yanil, and you pop up out of this hole. So there you have it, the mystery of the hole explained. Not really as exciting as I wanted it to be, but you know, neither is anything in this area. All right, we've got a quiz master here. Let's see what this is. This could be huge. <sighs> no! <laughs> Whoops, and we just passed 300,000 thieving XP, nearing our way to level 61 thieving. This is taking an extremely long time, but you know we're gonna get there and it's gonna be good. Level 61 thieving, let's go. Also, I don't know if I've talked about this little number here yet, but this is a plugin called the NPC Idle Timer. If you don't know, any NPC that's trapped and can't move for five full minutes will despawn and reappear at their spawn tile. This shows how long until that happens, meaning I basically never have to relure these guys. What the? Who is running in the what? What? <laughs> what the? <laughs>
I got a visit from everybody's favorite North man, and we had a deep conversation about this man that I've been thieving here. You are not here to judge, just to rob. Damn, those men really started hitting a lot harder. Have you ever been busy robbing a man blind and a snowball fight breaks out? And this pickpocket should be 62 thieving. Woo! There's level 40 fletching. And I just got flax for the first time ever on this account from a random event, which means that when I eventually do get access to a spinning wheel, I can make myself a bowstring to make myself a bow. And there's 23 farming, making progress on the 28 farming goal. And we are back to the maze. Random luck. Let's go. Be back with you after I'm done. And did you think that after three episodes in a row of further optimizations of the maze random event that I'd be all out? You thought I was done? You underestimate how many nerds I'm friends with because there's a new plugin by Skeldor called Amazing Chest. Check it out. It shows you how long until the chest closes and pings you with a notification when it does. For anyone who's ever done this, you know how much easier this will make your life. So huge shout out to Skeldor for making this one for the community. And I actually feel like I did kind of insanely well on air runes this time, which is really exciting. So let's see what we've got. 225 air runes? Oh my god! That is absurd. That's by far the most I've ever gotten. That's so good. And the rune tab is already looking very tight again. Like 481 air runes, that's a ton of XP. All right, back at the pickpocketing, these coins should get me 50,000 GP in the inventory. This has been a long time of thieving, so we're going to take a break. And actually, I think I've got some friends coming to help me with some dwarves, so hopefully that'll be the next thing you see right now. And here we are yet again at the border. We're starting this dwarf session off with 1,470 dwarf kills, so... Let's see where we go from there. And the spoils from another dwarf session. Another good handful of bars, runes, and ores. Really nice stuff. Thanks, guys, for helping out. Yo, another genie. Always love to see these guys. Whoa, that was a back-to-back -back strange plant. That's actually pretty sick. We're stocking up on those. I think that might be 10 strange fruits. And <laughs> there is 63 thieving. Just two more to go. I'm so ready to be done with this, but that is so good. 63 thieving. This can be a long level. Oh, God. All right, I did manage to find a uh, mystery box from a quiz random. So let's see if we can get something good from this. There's some really good rewards on this, so let's hope for something good. One body rune. Definitely not what I was hoping for, but you know, I'll take my first body rune. Sure, why not? We'll start the stack. Whoa, back-to-back -back quiz randoms. That's kind of crazy. Uh, let's see what we get from this. Second chance at something good from a mystery box. You can see the body rune is still right there in the chat, so it has not been very long. Let's see what we get. Myth scimitar? <laughs> I shouldn't have said that thing about starting the body rune stack. <laughs> okay, did you see that? Let's watch that again. See this? These imps spawn inside this room all the time, and every time they do, I think it's a dunce random event, and it's never a dunce random event, and it really pisses me off. And this is 400,000 thieving XP right on the dot. That is exactly 50,000 pickpockets. The end of this grind is finally within sight. That's 64 thieving! Just one more level to go now and we will be freed from this prison of robbery. Okay, I do genuinely appreciate all of these genies. I need these, but I really need a dunce. And there is 24 farming, another farming level. Each one of these feels exciting at this point. Oh my god, it's happening. Yes, yes. Oh, my heart is beating. It's been so long since I've gotten this. You know what time it is now. It's time for so many levels. Book of Knowledge for 30 XP, level 3 agility. Yes, this is so good. And then all of our lamps, we just get to dump them into agility. 30 XP, 30 more, 30 more, 30 more. And we're so level 4 agility too. Yes, this is so good. And we have one more lamp to drop onto agility, which puts us 53 XP away, dude. That's so good. That's two lamps or one book of knowledge. That is so good.
And let me just add that there is something very special at level 5 agility. I'm going to rake these weeds and uh, calm down a little bit because I'm a little too excited right now. Just hit 42 fletching, which normally I wouldn't show, but it's actually kind of a weirdly relevant level. We can make long kebet tipped bolts, which is the actual only thing that you can fire from the hunter's crossbow. So eventually that actually may be a thing I do. And willow shields... Which means when I do eventually roll willows, I'll immediately be able to do the highest willow fletching challenge. Here you're witnessing an advanced technique called slide thieving necessary to employ when the man is near his 5 minute despawn timer. This gives the man the opportunity to move so he won't despawn while I can continue to thieve him. This guy that just showed up is definitely some kind of weird bot as it keeps doing this thing where it switches from its scimitar to a staff and back really fast. Like that. I don't know what this bot is. Here we are, 50 plus hours and tens of thousands of clicks later, about to hit level 65 thieving. I streamed this milestone over on Twitch, so if you'd like to hang out for this type of thing in the future, the link is in the description and you can join my Discord for a ping when I go live. Anyway, here's the level. Last pick. Here we go. Woo! 65 thieving. We can now pickpocket from Watchmen. So we can't actually do it yet because the Watchmen are in the Watchtower and it requires level 18 agility to get to them. So I'm going to put this task on pause for now rather than calling it finished. Here's the actual number of men pickpocketed over the course of this grind. 56,179 pickpockets. And this is the final cash stack from this grind, 186k. After that, the stream turned into some more good old dwarf slaying, bronze bar, and that is the 100th bronze bar on the count. Yo, iron bar. These drops are excellent right now, you guys. Oh shit, I lose. This is my punishment. <laughs> to celebrate the end of the thieving grind, I've got another fun yanil fact for you guys. Although this one is less like a fun yanil fact and more like fun yanil math, I guess. I've gotten a lot of comments about not doing the 99 magic skill cape grind. Well, I've done some math to take a look at what that grind would actually require. Let's take another insane chunk challenge and use it as a benchmark. It took Limport 58 in-game days to kill 500,000 men to get to level 99 defense in Lumbridge. That's about 35 weeks of 40 hours a day. If I were to get 99 magic, the best source of runes would be the wizards and the wizard guild. Based on this data calculated by a discord user, it would require killing about 830,000 wizards to get the runes to go from level 66 to level 99 magic. Let's compare that to Limpwort's grind. We're killing around 66% more NPCs, so that's 60 weeks. Then they have twice as much HP, so that's 120 weeks. Then we actually have to cast all the runes as spells, mostly on this guy who gives increased XP rates on strike spells. Based on this chart, I've calculated it would take about 10 more weeks if you were somehow able to keep up casting your best spell constantly, which is definitely impossible, so this is an underestimate. That brings us to 130 weeks of 40 hours a week, or two and a half years of full-time wizard killing to get 99 magic. Using more realistic XP rates, this would likely take twice as long as it took Limpert to do everything in his first chunk. So there you have it. If you'd like the next episode to come out in 2026, this is how you get that. So now that I'm done with my arthritis simulator for now, there's one more major goal to hit before I can call this episode complete. I want to shift my focus completely to my goal of killing 4,000 dwarves. This should ensure that I have enough bars and ores to smith myself the supplies I'll need to reach 50 ranged. Having the community's help has been amazing, but I know I can't rely on them entirely, so I'll be farming some more mine runes to do some solo luring again when people aren't available. If you remember from last episode, my methods for this are not ideal, but they work if needed. Hopefully I'll get a lot of help along the way. Very nice. Yet another mystery box from that. Let's take a look. Could it be the Mithril Scimitar or something else good? It is an old boot. That sucks. I've been so unlucky with these. That guy just dropped nothing? Like, not even bones? This is a kind of funny troll because, I mean, I could just go buy this many Hunter's Crossbows from the store. They're not hard to get. I've got a little update for you here in the dwarf luring world. 
So we've been developing a new technique here where the lurer will run behind this tree, which allows the dwarves to face me sooner, meaning that the lurer can go pick up another dwarf more quickly, which chains dwarves a little bit faster. And it's a pretty nice upgrade to the method that we've been using before. So yeah, we're uh, theory crafting even this stupid luring technique. Okay, I missed the exact milestone, but we are now just over 2,000 dwarves. So we are halfway to the dwarf goal. There's 42 prayer while we're getting these dwarves. One level away from a rather large prayer unlock. Finishing up my overheads is in sight. There was 65 combat. That's a nice looking level. Doing some dwarves with friends here. Good shit. We have a maze random here. Time for another maze. Perfect timing to get some more air runes for this uh, dwarf luring that I'm going to be doing here in the near future. Teleport back. Let's take a look at the spoils. Not too shabby, I suppose. 105 air runes. That's pretty significantly under rate, but last time was really over, so I'm not going to be mad. It's another two hours of my life I'll never get back, but those are some good runes. And here we go. One last bone for a massive prayer level. 43 prayer. Let's go. Protection from melee is now unlocked on the account. That is all of the protection prayers. That is a huge milestone. We're definitely going to be using that down the line. I have some creative ways to be able to restore some prayer. So very cool. Just finished up another dwarf session and we're at a nice clean 2,500 dwarves. The progress on this is coming along very nicely. That'd be nice to have. Dang. The hell? <laughs> a nature talisman? Oh god, I'm gonna have to look up the drop rate on that. That is crazy. I've never <laughs> gotten one of those before on this account. Look who decided to show up. <laughs> the man himself, the plugin creator, Skeldor dropped by to help out with some dwarf luring. All right, we've got a another mystery box here. This could be the one. This could be the one. Let's see what we got. Oh my god! That's actually good! No way, dude! What? Yo, the steel plate body. Oh my God, that's actually good. Look at me, oh, what a beast. This thing literally triples my defense bonuses. That's so good. Oh my God, that's huge. Now we know what the look will be for the next era of this account. Got a beginner clue on the ground here. Let's take a look. Got a lot of these, but uh, is it the one? Hey, it's actually the one that I've been looking for. This is the one I can do in the wizard's tower. That's awesome. All right, well, I'm going to keep that, I guess. That's that's really cool. Finally, I had to throw away like hundreds of these. And there is a big level 60 strength. Beautiful. And there's a combat level with it also. All right, and that was the 3,000th dwarf kill. Very nice. We are super close to the end of this grind now. Huge shout out to everyone who's been helping me out. After that last dwarf session, we are currently sitting at 3,600 dwarves. Thanks to my killing men on my off time, I have over 500 casts to lure dwarves on my own, so I think it's time to gear up and get back to some solo luring. I'll finish this dwarf grind up the way I started it. I am officially back on my shit and we are 100 kills in. We are at 3,700 dwarf kills right now, making our way towards the final goal. And that was a magic level right there, 31 magic. And there's 32 magic, very nice. I think we'll probably get one more magic level before we're done with 4,000 dwarves. And there's a system update in a sec, so I'll have to wait before I can truly finish this up. Ooh, grab this guy. Very nice. <laughs> I messed up the lure on this guy, so I have to kill him outside of the chunk, but we did just cross over into the last 100 dwarves. We are really close to the end of this grind now. I'm super excited. I'm gonna get to sneak one more level in before the end of the episode. 26 farming. We are now just two levels away from the goal level. That will finish that up next episode for sure. Wow, that dwarf just spawned off of his normal tile, but I still got him. I don't think I've ever done that before. That was kind of cool. I'm just a handful of kills away now, and I've been getting tin ore, which is the thing that I want the most. This last inventory is totally going to pad the loot tracker. That's awesome. And there is a level just before we're done with the end of this grind. We literally have three more dwarves to kill, but that is 33 magic. That's level for telekinetic grab, which we're actually going to use a ton coming up here. And I can't believe I'm saying this. 
But this is the final dwarf. This is the last one for 4,000 dwarf kills. This is insane. And there he goes. Down he goes. 4,000 dwarf kills. We did it. <laughs> Finally, I can turn off all of my plugins and the game can just look normal again. And I never have to lure another dwarf in my life. To celebrate the end of the dwarf grind, I've got something very special here. I've been hanging on to my mystery boxes that I've been getting from quiz randoms just as a little reward for myself and we're finally done. So I'm going to open these up here and the hope is that I get a mithril scimitar which would absolutely change the future of this account. It's so much better than my other options. So let's hope for that but there's also some other good and really rare options. So let's see what we get. First one, a casket. With an emerald in it. All right, that's fine, I guess. The second one, come on, Mithril Scimitar. Nothing, no! All right, last chance. Please, please be something good. <laughs> what? A tooth have the key, that's so rare. No, that's so much rarer than the Mithril Scimitar. Oh, come on. Oh, well. The hunt for the Mithril Scimitar continues. For now, let's wrap this episode up. Here's the final loot tracker for the dwarves. Ending off with the absolute perfect cash total of 420k, we got a ton of great loot, including almost 110, which is going to be super important to start the smithing journey, but we'll talk more about that later. We also got really lucky with bronze bars, getting about 10% more than expected. I also wanted to shout out everyone who helped with the dwarf grind. This was no small feat and many of these people spent hours helping me out. In total we probably spent at least 20 hours killing dwarves together, so thank you so much to everyone on this list. So with 4000 dwarves under my belt, I've hopefully got the ores and bars to smith up to 50 ranged. There's just one problem. To start smithing, I need to superheat my ores and superheat requires level 43 magic. I'm still a ways off from that and training magic is currently insanely slow as I have to wait for maze randoms to give me my air runes. So what's next for the account? Let's do a quick episode recap on the progress so far and then I'll show you because it's actually really cool so don't close the video just yet. The big one is of course 65 thieving which means we can pickpocket a watchman once we finally get to 18 agility. But thieving still isn't done in the long run because there's a goal of 82 in the agility dungeon. Other than that we made a ton of progress towards the eventual ranged and smithing goals and we got a few magic and farming levels along the way. We also got pretty lucky with the steel plate body and beefed up our combat stats quite a bit including unlocking overhead prayers. So the cool thing. Well, there was one part of the 65 thieving stream that I didn't show you. I was saving it for the end because it quite literally changes everything. We have a book of knowledge and this book of knowledge right here, when put onto agility, gets us five agility. That is it. That's the level that I've been looking for for so long. There is a very particular use for that. These rocks require five agility and climbing them gives me 25 agility XP, which means I now have a consistent way to train agility. That's right, level 5 agility lets me use this extremely obscure obstacle to begin agility training. So next episode, we're unlocking an entirely new area. But until then, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit that subscribe button and if you were jamming to the original music, feel free to check it out in the playlist down in the description. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye bye <laughs>